welcome back again to the channel my name is Arnold and today I decided to make this video because there are a lot of guys I'm not a lot of guys so I think three weeks back I actually made a post in the community uh, tab on YouTube here yeah. I was asking you guys on the things that you that you struggle with in native ways and today I just want to be talking about the things and we see how we can um, fix them so um, there is this guy his name is Funner XL, I don't know how they pronounce it, but he actually said uh, mainly getting a good tone with mastering. My 808s are usually are usually always too much or too low. I put a pick controller on the kick and connect the 808 to the kick and then get the middle confusing. So I think this guy was trying to um, make a side chain with a kick and the 808, but you know, in that moment things are a little bit tricky to do that. Um, I will do a, a different video for the side chain, but there is another thing that I can recommend you to do for um, for for side chaining or to balance your kick and and the 808 by using a dynamic EQ and a good tone in mastering. Yeah, a good tone in mastering. I think mastering comes with experience, and it is very important for you to always try to make some good sound selection and try to mix a little bit while you're making the song because as long as the mix is good like you're not going to struggle with uh, some phasing issues of mastering which might make the 808 sound distorted so all right so let me open up element mesh here and i was working on a project and with the kick in the 808 he was talking about the balancing so um uh, by the way, it all starts with a good sample of an 808. So I usually use the uh, the semantics that the lot of they have a lot of free banks. You can actually go ahead and check on the semantics page. It has a lot of fire um, drum kit. So there's this uh, 808. Uh, this is the track I was making earlier on before I started the video. Alright, so it, it has the kick pattern obviously, so what I'm going to do is to Alright, so I've come up with a quick uh, 808 pattern and one thing you have to uh, do every time you load in a kick I mean, every time you load in an 808 into LMO well, uh I think I made a video a while ago where I was showing this. So there is this um, a plugin it's called uh, G Tune right there. So what G Tune does actually monitor what you I mean monitor the key in which your 808 is. So um, Usually these 808s are not always perfect and they do have some uh, variation in their making but uh, the last the last um, note that comes up now here is that's A, this is G, but usually initially when I, I drop in an 808, the same 808 and I put G snap onto it, I mean G tune. And I press the same letters, you see it's playing C. So there is that one thing that I learned that I always do is to you see this white thing is to move it right here up to C. So every time you press this A plays A C plays C. Well it, it matters, you have to try some some 808 come with a different tuning but yeah that's one thing that you have to do with the, with the 808 here in element ways so i'm gonna go ahead and move that and another thing that you can do is to actually come here put the uh, the modulation way up and put on a little attack just to to, to release that clicking sound that you have been hearing in the air what else did we talk about Pick up a put a pre controller. Well, usually, I don't put a pre controller on my 808. What I what I always do um, is to choose what what I want to hear more. If if you want the kick punching more, 
then you have to reduce some frequencies where um, the kick and the aerial aid are co coinciding. So um, let's say in this video, um, I just want to, I just want my kick to punch more. So what I always do is to add Nova, TDR Nova. It's actually a, a free plugin and uh you can go ahead and monitor where the frequencies uh you know that the punching frequencies are always around 50 to 100 so when you play them both so i'm gonna create a dynamic some kind of dynamic All right, so in this process, um, as you can see, whenever the kick hits, there's a reduction around these around 50, around 50 hertz. So the, the, there's a reduction. You want the, the kick to pop out more. So for me, I think this is a better way than using a compression, and the side chain stuff, because usually the compression, there's a way it makes things sound a little bit unnatural. So this is what I always do with that. So you can go ahead and experiment uh, with TDR Nova, um, yeah, and they do have a whole bunch of different stuff on their site. Uh, that is the Tojo Down Labs, yeah. So, um, so there is this guy. He he's saying this has nothing to do with elements, but as a beginner producer, I really. Um, I, I can't uh, I can't really afford drum and sample kits and that is and that way all my beats sound trash. Do you have something to suggest? So uh, earlier on in the video, I told you guys, Simatix has a lot of fire drum kits which are actually free. I know uh, a lot of producers down here who use um, the Simatix packs. They do have. Um, actually i have a catalog of um i do have a catalog of semantics packs so i do have the the cobra cobra hip-hop sample pack it's actually free uh there is a lot of sounds there there is the orchid pack yeah it has a lot of sounds in there go ahead and uh, check out on there websites there is a lot a lot of stuff on there you can go ahead and check it panosa i hope i i really uh reply to you i'll be putting the semantics uh, link down in the description plus uh, i'm also trying to build another another drum kits for you guys basically for beginners it's called michael jordan so he's like getting the right piano melody for my song it's really uh trying for me or it's something like that is hard for him so uh so michael jordan there's there's this one cool trick i always use in my in my melodies or to, to come up with melodies usually if probably you don't know music theory there is this cool thing that you can always do the easiest way to make melodies is to first create chords you know sometimes if you're a beginner, you have to uh, either go ahead and search up for a known code progression and, you know, you can try them in different keys. Let me try and explain that here. So I'm going to come up here on, on the internet and I search up for code progressions. You can really try it out. Um, I don't know what it does, but it actually does good. So, yeah. So there is one here, uh, I had played C, A minor, D minor, and G. And you can go ahead and come here in Elemomus in your piano world. And so we are creating C, A minor, D minor, and G. Okay. So so for, for to create a, a, a major chord, uh, this I'll start with C. Then I'll count one, two, three, four. Then I press here. Then I count one, two, three. So that is a C major chord. And so for A minor, it's on A. Then you count one, two, three. 
then you got one two three a four that is a minor so b minor b minor you come here at d one two three one two three and four and then you go to g major one one two three four one two three so this is the chord progression that we picked So that 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 that, that is a, a basic chord progression that we see we just picked that over from the internet, but you can uh spice this up. You already see me doing this in my videos. I always highlight the middle notes like this and then I flip them up. There is a texture that it gives uh, the whole thing. So yeah. So you already have a chord progression. Now you want to create a melody from this chord progression. So remember, we are in a key C. So uh, in early moments, there is this feature that you can use. You can actually come here to and select the major, and you come to the, the same uh, uh, note C. Then you um, right click and you come here to mark current scale so all the notes which are in c major are going to be highlighted so you can go ahead and start filling in different notes according to the feeling according to the way you're feeling to create a melody so you can say let's say um okay i do have c i do have g you can say i'm, I'm going to make uh, the same thing so i can say c and g then you play again this G, I mean E, right here, so around here, so it's a So I've just created something, the very start, it's like a melody, though it's not complete. So I can say, I can decide to repeat the notes which are creating the chords to make a melody out of them. So uh, here I do have A, so I'll come here to, I'm gonna have to reduce the length of this I'm gonna come here to A so I've used the same notes that are in the in these chords to create a melody just to show you how simple this is in. So with that, I just have a um, good melody that I can start with. From here, you can go ahead and, you know, add in a lot in the notes in the scale. You can add a whole bunch of stuff. So with that, uh, Michael Jordan, you can that is the, the the simplest thing that you can start with creating melodies. With uh, a little practice, you can get this right, and you can just imagine something and you know come up with a melody in in any key that you want. You know, I hope I answered all the questions that uh, you guys. Um, shout out to Panosa, Michael Jordan, and this guy right here for. Uh, commenting and yeah i hope uh what i've shared with you will be of good, of good help and help you um come uh, the problem that you you've been having with those things so yeah um i want to stop here for this video but yeah i appreciate you if you've watched the whole video and yeah i mean subscribe to the channel yeah, a lot of you guys are watching but you're not subscribed so go ahead and subscribe and yeah see you in the next one bye